Morning, everyone. Good. If you were a school teacher, he'd make you do it again. For a, for a second, I thought this was a super realistic painting. Of the thing, was AI made it. No, we're uh, grateful to have you all here. Uh, thank you all for uh, being here. I want to especially uh, thank the members of the press that are here, your work covering state government and helping get the word out on important programs like we're going to be talking about today. Uh, but today is an exciting uh, day. This is the first time in modern memory that we've had a dozen state agencies at the same time at the same press conference all uh, rowing in the same direction on an issue that affects virtually every North Dakota. And so we're really pleased about that. And all the participating agencies that are here, we invite all of you to join us afterwards. We're going to take a group photo of everybody here for this historic moment. Uh, but I, I'm super grateful for the, uh, the collaboration when we talk uh, about the whole of government approach. Uh, when we're talking about this, when Lieutenant Governor Miller and I uh, in our administration have been very focused on bringing everybody together. This isn't about growing government. It's not about new programs or more spending. It's just getting everybody that's already working on something working together in the same direction uh, so we can have the biggest impact on our citizens. I got three folks up here that are going to be speaking. Uh, first and foremost, uh, those three here, we got Superintendent uh, Kirsten Basler, uh, State Treasurer Thomas Beadle, uh, and, and, and as those two know, I announced during my State of State address in Dickinson, uh, they would be leading this effort in coordination with the, the Bank of North Dakota. Got Kelvin Hewlett here from the, one of the SVP from the Bank of North Dakota. The Governor's Office, Securities Department, Department of Financial Institutions, and others. Uh, and we're thrilled to have them all here. These folks that are standing with me are going to be speaking. Uh, <clears throat> and the batting order, I think they know, is Kelvin. Kelvin, the superintendent and the treasurer. Uh, also want to make sure uh, that we uh, know we've got other elected officials whose agencies are working hard on this as well. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Insurance Commissioner John Gottfried, uh, Securities Commissioner Karen Tyler, our wonderful Department of Financial Institutions leader, uh, Lisa Cruz, who had a birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Lisa. <coughs> That's not what the press conference is about, but it <laughs> could have been. But. Uh, but uh, Job Service Director, uh, who's just killing it, Pat Bertinoli, uh, I know he's here, but the State Health Officer, Dr. Bazar Wiebe is here, uh, North Dakota University System Chancellor Mark Hagerot, or representatives from the, from the university system. I know Wade Sick is here, who's our Department of Career and Technical Education leader, uh, Retirement Investment Officer uh, Director Jan Murtha, Public Employees Retirement System Director Rebecca Fricke, and State Library Literacy Specialist Lexi Whitehorn. Let's give a hand for all these collaborating agencies. So all of these groups and their team members, we've got a, a goal, a combined goal for the state, and that goal is uh, is aspirational, uh, but it's not audacious. It's a role. It's a goal that we can achieve by working together, and that's for North Dakota to become the most financially literate state in the country by 2027. And that's as measured by the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority's National Financial Capability Study. That's a mouthful, uh, but that's a study that's conducted every three years. It was first launched in 2009. Includes data on financial behaviors, attitudes, knowledge, access to financial products, and services. The latest set of data, which came out in 2022, uh, unfortunately for North Dakota, found that only 37% of adults, and we're talking adults, but of course we've got uh, kids under 18 have to have financial literacy this day and age as well, uh, with the access to all the purchasing available on their, their smartphones, et cetera. But with adults, only 37% in North Dakota felt confident in their knowledge of finances. Uh, our neighborhood is uh, not doing much better. Minnesota was at 40%, 41%, uh, Montana 38%, Wyoming uh, leading the area at uh, 44 South Dakota also at 41 but we know that we can do better. We know that we can not only lead our region, we know that we working together that we have an opportunity to lead the nation. The primary focus of this campaign will be to motivate North Dakotans to uh, access free tools and resources that are being made available for everybody. It's available at the website smartwithmymoney.nd.gov. 
point to the flag on the left with the logo. <laughs> Please etch that in your memory. Make sure that you share that with all your friends and family uh, and neighbors. But this is a free website uh, with this access to tools. This site's going to provide tips, personalized learning resources to help people improve their financial literacy. But there's a bonus, literally a bonus. If you go on this and you uh, you can compete for challenges on the site, if you're competing, uh, completing the exercises on the site, uh, it gets you entered into a pool to win cash prizes. So this uh, site was developed uh, by a third party called Enrich, which specializes in financial wellness education. It's based on research and financial literacy. Uh, and those using the website, uh, we know it's been effective. They have a 32% decrease in financial stress, 59% increase in users who are able to build up a three-month emergency fund, and 28% increase in users who paid off their credit card debt in full each month. Uh, why is all of this important? Well, because residents, when they're financially healthy in a state like ours, uh, there are far-reaching impacts on their families, on their neighborhoods, on their work life, their personal well-being, and then and ultimately the state's economy. When we reduce financial stress, it improves mental health, and we know that mental health is an issue that, that, uh, that our state, our nation is facing every single day. Good financial decisions decreases the number of people with excessive credit card debt, which we know can be a burden, particularly in today's uh, high interest rates. Uh, and when people have, uh, have a, a handle on their finances, there are more people who are able to do the things that improve and strengthen their families, like purchasing homes, starting or expanding businesses, or having increased uh, expendable income, or as we said earlier, to have that rainy day fund built up to help you get through a downturn. So we're super grateful for all the agencies that are, have committed to making North Dakota the most financially literate state and improving the quality of life of our citizens. And when we do that, when we help citizens improve their financial literacy, it's just one more thing that we can do when we talk about our purpose in state government, those six important words, which is empowering people, improving lives, and inspiring success. That certainly uh, fits in line with that. And with that, I'd like to invite uh, Calvin up to explain more about the Bank of North Dakota's role in this effort and the benchmarks we'll be using to measure success. Uh, and again, after Kelvin, then we'll hear from the superintendent and then from the treasurer. But again, thank you all for being here today. Let's give it up for the Bank of North Dakota, our first speaker. Thank you, Governor. Well, good morning. And first of all, Governor, thank you uh, for helping us uh, kick this off today. And thank you for including this as part of your state of the state and uh, helping us set this. Um, I did call it an audacious goal, but we think it's an achievable goal, and so we appreciate that. And I especially want to thank Treasurer Beadle and also Superintendent Basler. Uh, it was about a year ago uh, that we were actually sitting in um, the superintendent's office, uh, along with uh, the treasurer and some of our staff, kind of thinking through um, this whole concept and idea of financial literacy and how do we do this better as a state. Uh, this has been something that uh, the bank has been involved in for about 15 years. Uh, so as part of our uh, federal grant uh, through our student loan division, uh, we've been working on financial literacy um, and we've really concentrated uh, at the high school and the college level. But this is obviously a need that is so much broader uh, than just uh, that level. And so as we were talking about, how do we take an all of state approach to this and how do we engage um, the agencies and also the private sector uh, into helping us achieve this goal? And, and so. Um, today we're, we're, we're here, we're starting, uh, we're very excited to, to get underway. Um, in addition to, you know, kind of the other components that we have identified, also uh, I talk about the private sector. Our financial partners have identified um, an increased need to provide that basic financial education to their customers um, and making sure that our residents have awareness of the impact um, of debt on um, their lives, whether that's student loan debt, home mortgage debt, car debt, um, all of those sorts of things. And obviously today's online world really allows people access to uh, financial information. We hope that that's always accurate. Sometimes it's not accurate, but that's um, why we are working towards what we are uh, with the Smart With Your Money website so that we have good information uh, that can easily be uh, accessed by the residents of our state. As the governor noted, uh, we did look at multiple options uh, as a group and really think about how do we deliver uh, this um, information in a way that is readily available but also easy to understand? And we selected smartwithmymoney.gov. Uh, and this is a unique website. Uh, it dives in deeper than maybe typically what you would see um, with other 
uh, types of education or other websites. Um, in addition to the topics such as budgeting and decreasing credit card debt, um, there is a very solid based research section uh, where you can uh, go in and determine your financial personality. Um, and if you haven't done this, I've done it. Um, it is really interesting um, when you do um, the uh, survey and the questions, and, and it's pretty accurate, um, I would have to say. Um, and so uh, we're very excited about that. As the governor mentioned, there's a lot of modules um, that can be tailored to specific financial information that uh, folks are looking for. And there's also a financial incentive uh, for folks to, um, to be engaged. Uh, so Bank of North Dakota is uh, funding this site. Um, but we realized that if this is going to be achievable as a state and to really drive this message and to really drive this initiative, we needed everyone involved. And so I am so grateful that we have all of the um, association, or I should say the uh, other agencies um, involved with us as we're uh, moving forward with them. All of us are going to play an important role um, as we move forward in this financial literacy uh, journey. I did want to uh, take one minute and also just acknowledge um, the staff of the Bank of North Dakota. Um, Lance Hill is uh, leading our financial literacy effort and our other team members are here. Um, we are retasking them a bit um, from what they have traditionally done in the past, which is just working with um, our high schools and our college um, age folks and, and um, retasking them to really also engage with our state agency partners um, and really help, it, uh, help us drive this initiative forward. It's easy for us to stand up here and talk about doing this and leading it forward, um, but it's the staff that's really going to help us uh, achieve this. And so we're very uh, thankful uh, for your efforts in, in taking this forward with us. So um, in addition um, you know, to communicating with our and coordinating with our agencies. We're going to be working with the private sector. Um, we've talked to our lead financial institutions. Um, this is something that they're also um, very interested in. So um, we're going to show you um, a couple of our 15-second uh, spots that have been created uh, to demonstrate um, kind of how we think this um, site can improve and impact the lives of North Dakotans. So as you can see, there's a, uh, this is kind of a kickoff. There's a variety of spots that speak to um, all of those different audiences uh, that we're trying to reach. And uh, I know that as we look to the future, we've got, uh, I think, some really interesting ideas about how we can promote this across the state. Um, and so more to come on that. But uh, I want to um, invite um, the Department of Public Instruction Superintendent, Kristen Basler, to come up um, and, again, thank her for uh, all of her efforts related to this. Thank you, Kelvin. I appreciate that. Thank you, Governor, too, as well, for, for helping spearhead this, lead this, as you do so many great initiatives in the state. Truly appreciate your leadership. Um, truly thank you to the Bank of North Dakota. The first meeting we had, as, as uh, Kelvin had said, was in the superintendent's office. I think Kelvin was a little wigged out about being called to the superintendent's office. But as he got there, he felt a little bit more comfortable, so it made me wonder, how many times has he been in that situation? But no, those were good meetings. They were very good meetings um, at, at, in that office. A lot of brainstorming, a lot of ideas that started out with a bang and thought, oh, that's really not going to work. And so, and that's what happens when you come together as, as one of government. 
So I really do appreciate you all coming here to learn about this important initiative. We are grateful for your help in spreading the word about how the citizens, all of the citizens in this great state, can increase their financial knowledge. If, as the governor said, if someone is financially literate, it strengthens the quality of life for themselves, for their families, their friends, for our economy, for our state. It is a good and positive thing all around. Our North Dakota legislature and our public schools have recognized the importance of financial literacy for years. One of our high school graduation requirements is indeed including instruction on personal finance. This includes information about budgeting, credit savings, taxes, investments, and college expenses. But this new Smart With My Money initiative goes well beyond high school. It will help all North Dakotans increase their financial knowledge and get a better understanding of how they make decisions about their money. It's important for all of us to have a good understanding of our finances and the risks that we're prepared to tolerate. I'm proud to be working with Governor Burgum, Treasurer Beadle, Kelvin Hewlett, and all of you as agency leaders to empower people with this financial knowledge. If there's one thing that I've learned in the 12 years that I've been the state superintendent is how much we value each other and how easy it is to do work together in North Dakota. The second thing I've learned about being the state superintendent for the last 12 years is how much North Dakotans value their young people. And for a banking and finance, a treasurer for the governor's office to think to the K-12 sector, to think to the education of the youngest citizens that we have and include them in such an important initiative speaks volumes about the state that we live in. I often say the investments that you make in K-12 education, you will never sit in the shade of the trees that you are planting, but they will be here as a legacy. So thank you so much for never forgetting about K-12 education. Financial literacy begins with five-year-olds in their first lemonade stand or whatever entrepreneurial business they want to start. So thank you for working together. We are providing a path forward where every North Dakotan has the tools and the knowledge to navigate their financial journey with confidence. I'd now like to introduce our next speaker, my friend, my colleague, someone with a deep and abiding interest in financial literacy, Treasurer Beadle. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsten. I think you just called me a nerd. Um, I'm okay with that. Just, okay. just for all my nerds out there, thank you for being here. Uh, so, so this is an awesome opportunity for us as a state. So I serve as vice president of the National Association of State Treasurers. I was elected that by my treasurer peers across the country. And this is something that we've been focusing on a lot over the last couple of years is financial education and empowerment. We started working with Enrich. We started making this program available to states. Bank of North Dakota, uh, uh, Kelvin and Lance and the financial literacy team uh, really jumped on it, embraced it, loved it, and wanted to bring this to North Dakota. And this is something that we have a great opportunity for. Because financial literacy, this isn't the end product. This isn't just the end of us trying to, to launch something and great, now it's done. This is about us trying to bring everyone together, make these programs available, and make it so that people understand how important this is. Uh, when you look at national data, 75% of couples report financial stress as a major impact on their relationship. Uh, when you look at folks as they're working to plan for retirement, most people aren't comfortable with where they're at. And the median uh, savings for retirement is about 180000 by the time they get close to, to 55 uh, as they're starting to look in that last uh, 10 years of their working time. So people aren't comfortable talking about this subject. And this is something that we want to try to change here in North Dakota. And so we're doing wonderful things uh, all across the state, whether it's uh, with, with Karen Tyler and the team over at Securities in the, in the stock market game that they have with 25 500 students across the state participating and learning about stocks and trading and investing, uh, whether it's what uh, the, that tall insurance commissioner guy is doing to make people comfortable with the, the oldest financial product in the world uh, in the insurance industry and making people comfortable with those decisions, or Jan Murtha and the Retirement Investment Office and trying to get teachers comfortable with their own retirement and their own pension system and recognize
recognizing that they can't just rely on that. You need to have inflationary cost of living adjusted stuff too. And if we can get the teachers comfortable with financial education and literacy for their own personal lives, they'll be more comfortable teaching in the classroom and helping our students out in, in the world as well. Or Department of Human Services and, and, and Dr. Weeby and what they're doing to help with new Americans and folks that don't understand banking systems as we have it in America and making sure that they're comfortable with that because if they can learn to navigate those waters themselves, they won't have to rely on state services and safety net programs in the future. So this is about an all of government approach, bringing everyone together to not just provide financial literacy tools, which by the way, I'm a forward thinking optimist was my uh, personality on the Smart With My Money thing. Uh, not just about giving them the tools, not just about having them take a survey, find out what, what their personality is, but also make sure that they have stuff to learn from beyond that so that they can take that next step, make it, make it accessible and valuable for them going forward. So it's not just putting all that stuff together, but it's communicating with all of us, communicating as a state as a whole so that we know what's going on, we know what each agency is doing so that we can continue to drive towards those goals of being the most financially literate state in 2027, of not just working with our K-12 students, uh, our, our higher education students, but across uh, the, the state as a whole, all age brackets, everyone involved, because we want to make sure every North Dakotan is feeling comfortable with their financial situation. So this is a, a great starting point. I'm really pleased that we're here today. I think this is an awesome launching piece for us as a state. I'm excited as we continue to move the ball forward on this and we continue to, to, to promote financial literacy. And I just want to thank you all for coming for a wonderful kickoff to Financial Literacy Month. This is just the beginning of as we're trying to get, do all this stuff and make it an impact on North Dakota. So thank you for all of your efforts on this and thank you for being here today. And I think now we'll, we'll open it up for any questions. Before, before we jump into questions, I, I do want to just uh, thank another group of people because uh, we're promoting financial literacy, but every single day uh, we have agencies in North Dakota that get up and go to work and their team members to protect the finances of the citizen state. And I uh, mentioned uh, Lisa Cruz and her team that work with uh, all of our the banks across North Dakota. Uh, Karen Tyler and her group who've, uh, you know, literally cracked the case as investigators on a number of financial fraud cases this last year. Uh, we've got uh, everything that we're, we're doing uh, in other aspects on the insurance side. Uh, the insurance commissioner making sure that we've got everybody in our state that's offering insurance or legitimate companies. Because at a time with high inflation and high interest rates and with access to internet, more and more uh, people are preying on people with low financial literacy and whether that's young people or citizens. And so there is a risk. There are bad people out there that try to take advantage of that. So one of the things that we can do uh, to help protect our citizens is get financial literacy up and at the same time make sure that our agencies, our regulatory agencies are doing a great work at protecting our citizens. And part of that, uh, NDIT, the North Dakota uh, IT department, uh, you know, they've got you know, broad responsibilities now working with our tribes, our communities, and the state of North Dakota. There's over 250,000, over, over a, th a third, almost a th well, over 25% of the people in North Dakota are on the same email system because you got every K-12 student, every college student, every state employee. Uh, that's a wide surface area of attack, and they're doing a great job of protecting us every day against uh, people that are scheming to try to take money away from, uh, you know, whether it's ransomware or whatever, from communities uh, or from citizens. So they're a great team of people doing that every day, but part of the way we protect ourselves and move forward is with this effort, uh, which is this broad educational effort. So uh, way to go, Team ND. And then we are going to move to questions, uh, and the questions can be about the program. That'll be great. And, and uh, John Godfrey indicated that he would take all the questions yeah. earlier before we started. So if you have any around insurance, well, we're going to jump straight to him. I'll let some of the program. Oh, go ahead, Dave. Well, yeah. I, just, I just want to just get a clarification. How do you measure success? What do you, what do you do that yep, that is a great question. And so um, there is a website, and I'm looking forward here. Um, that <clears throat> it's, <clears throat> excuse me, um, where there is a study that's conducted um, every three years, it's the Financial Industry Regulatory Authorities National Financial Capability Study. So that's a, that's a mouthful. So in, NFCS is um, the entity that does surveys, and so they just completed one uh, in the 2023, going into 2024 here. Um, and so um, that is how we will gauge success. Um, is in looking at how do our numbers change and we want to be 
um, the top state financially when we get to 2027. And you do think that's an achievable goal? We do think that's an achievable, uh, achievable goal. I think that one of the strengths of North Dakota is that we all know each other really well. We have each other's cell phones numbers. And so when we um, decide as a state that we're going to really uh, take on an initiative and work together, um, we have that ability, I think, unlike so many other places where we can coordinate uh, and really work together to drive that message um, and achieve that goal. And so uh, we really think this is something that's achievable. I would let either one of you okay. speak to that as well. I will just put a fine point on that. So the governor announced this initiative at the State of the State Address uh, in Dickinson. Before I got into my vehicle and checked my phone, I had messages from the state librarian who said, you know what, we do some things, we can help with that. I had a message from Jan Murtha of the Re Investment and Retirement Board and said, you know what, this aligns so well to our strategic plan to help our teachers become more financially li literate. It wasn't even 30 minutes later. So to that point, i just put an exclamation point on that, that when we decide to do something, absolutely we can achieve that goal. And to kind of follow up on that, mm -hmm. the survey's only released every couple of years. Mm -hmm. What metrics are you tracking in the meantime to sort of gauge whether your promotional efforts are yep. being made? That, that's a great question. And the, uh, I forgot to grab it off my printer this morning um, on my way out, but uh, what we are able to uh, get from the uh, Smart With My Money oh, website um, is actually a monthly report um, that um, so this is our overall, but what we were able to get is a monthly report, which is a consolidation. There's nobody identified individually, but we have a, a, a report each month that tells us how many people are accessing the website, uh, how many people completed it. It's actually about a, a 15 or 16 page report. So we'll be able to track those metrics uh, utilizing those statistics and probably release those from time to time to help uh, everyone gauge how we're making progress. Any other questions? Governor, I'll let you wrap up. Well, again, thank you all for being here. And if there's uh, no other questions, again, thanks to the press for helping get the word out on this important program. Thanks to all the participating uh, agencies. Uh, and I want to uh, also invite uh, the Lieutenant Governor and all the participating agencies. We're going to take a group photo uh, up here uh, with everybody that's uh, part of this uh, historic initiative. So if you and your team members, uh, with, with, bank, job service, self, anybody that's uh, working on this project uh, as a team member, not just the leaders. We want everybody up here if we can do that. Uh, that would be great. So we'll uh, take a minute to reassemble for that. <clears throat> but thank you all for being here.